Hi, everybody. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. It's Tuesday, November 17th. Thanks for choosing to be here. I've got your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. I start off with breaking news here at 2.30 from Governor Mike DeWine from his press conference. He has announced a 21-day curfew across the state starting at 10 p.m. and extending through 5 a.m. That will go into effect on Thursday, November 19th at 10 p.m. Governor Mike DeWine said he's also asking every Ohioan each day to do at least one thing that reduces your contact with others and also said that if we can cut down contacts by 20 to 25 percent, it'll make a big difference. Governor Mike DeWine says this paired with mask wearing will go a long way from stopping our hospitals from being overrun. Now, from a legal perspective, I'm an attorney here in the state of Ohio, in case you weren't aware. This is an interesting move from Governor Mike DeWine because there has been an outcry from restaurants and bars that say they feel they've been singled out, as well as fitness facilities, as Governor Mike DeWine has been talking about, talking about potentially having to shut down those places of business in the state of Ohio. And there has already been that sort of curfew implemented in bars and restaurants where last call is at 10 p.m. So now, Governor Mike DeWine making this a statewide curfew again starting on Thursday and extending for 21 days so there will be a curfew in effect in Ohio for the next 21 days from 10 p.m. through 5 a.m. going into effect on Thursday November 19th that's the latest out of Governor Mike DeWine's press conference today now this comes after just yesterday the city of Cleveland said that it was not able to report its latest COVID-19 numbers because of what it called an unprecedented surge Late on Monday, the city said that they were still analyzing incredibly high numbers and they wouldn't be able to share the numbers like they typically do around 7 p.m. on weekdays. Also yesterday, the city of Akron passed legislation prohibiting large-scale gatherings. This is saying that no homes would be able to have six guests, gatherings including six guests, so whoever lives in the household plus six people at gatherings in the city of Akron. Now let's take a look at the numbers from the Ohio Department of Health out today. In the past 24 hours, we have another day of over 7,000 cases. That number is 7,079 new reported cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. In terms of the number of tests that are coming back positive, the positive rate is now at 12.8% for the last seven days. That's the average. That's up 0.3% from Monday, obviously well above that World Health Organization recommended threshold of 5%. There have been 30 new deaths reported in the last 24 hours and 368 new hospitalizations reported in the last 24 hours. Now, it had only been a few days where we had had more than 3,000 hospitalizations, but that number is getting very close to 4,000, getting very high. It's now at 3,648. That's an increase of 256 people who are currently hospitalized from yesterday. And out of those people who are currently in the hospital, 897 of them are being treated in an intensive care unit. So that's holding steady at one in four people currently in the hospital for COVID in Ohio being treated in an ICU with 27 new ICU admissions in the last 24 hours. Right now across the state, 27% of our hospital beds are available for people who need inpatient treatment. Now let's take a look at the national and the global numbers for COVID-19. These numbers come from Johns Hopkins University. And in the U.S., we are plowing through 11 million cases, well on the way to 12 million cases. That number right now is at 11,260,662. That's almost 160,000 more cases than we saw at this time yesterday in the U.S. Globally, the number of cases is now over... 55 million. That number is at 55,333,374. That is over 650,000 new cases in one day at the global level. Looking at deaths here in the U.S., the total number of de deaths related to COVID-19 is now at 247,645. And at the global level, that's now at 1,332,390. We've got 4% of the global population, we've got 20.4% of the global cases, and 18.6% of the global deaths right now here in the U.S. 
We did get good news yesterday about a new vaccine that is coming through Moderna in stage three of its trial there and it being nearly 95 percent effective, according to those early results. Well, now we know who the money is, who is behind that. Dolly Parton has helped fund that vaccine that's nearly 95 percent effective to the tune of one million dollars. Dolly Parton had announced back in April that she was donating the one million dollars to Vanderbilt. This was through the Dolly Parton COVID-19 Research Fund. And when she made that announcement back in April, she was encouraging other people who could afford it to make donations as well. She said at the time her longtime doctor friend had been involved in research at Vanderbilt for many years. And she said that that doctor told her that they were making exciting advancements towards research of the coronavirus. And clearly, we have now arrived at that point now. And Dr. Anthony Fauci, of course, the nation's leading infectious disease expert, said that these early results from these vaccine studies are, quote, truly striking. He said the vaccines that we're talking about and vaccines to come are really the light at the end of the tunnel. It is very nice to hear Dr. Fauci talking in those positive terms because, quite frankly, that's not something that we've heard a lot of throughout the stages of this pandemic in the recent months. Now, here back in Northeast Ohio, the Cleveland Browns have reopened their facility after another player has tested positive for COVID-19. The Browns put fullback Andy Janovich on the COVID reserve list. Now, they said that he's had no close contacts identified since testing positive on Monday morning, but he did play in the game on Sunday against the Houston Texans. He played in 26 snaps, 15 offensively, and 11 for special teams when the Browns won over the Houston Texans on Sunday. This is the second shutdown for the Cleveland Browns in four days. The Browns had to close the facility on Friday early in the day through the afternoon, and then they placed offensive lineman Chris Hubbard on the COVID reserve list. Now, Chris Hubbard sat out the game on Sunday, remaining to keep a close eye on what's going on with the Browns facility, but they have opened again the facility today after shutting down with this latest player testing positive. In other news for the Cleveland Browns, wide receiver Jarvis Landry hosted his inaugural Thanksgiving food drive for Cleveland Heights families today. This wrapped up today at 2 p.m. in Cleveland Heights, and volunteers there gave Thanksgiving meals to more than 300 families in need. This was a combined effort with the Greater Cleveland Food Bank and Jarvis Landry's Building Winners Foundation. Landry created this foundation earlier this year. He announced it in July, and the goal of this foundation is to put on programs and events to spread positivity and empower the next generation. The event, of course, was drive through style, and there were people wearing masks and people keeping social distances to prevent the spread of COVID-19, and over 300 families were helped today at that event put on by Jarvis Landry and his foundation. If you are in need and looking for a Thanksgiving dinner, there's a partnership that's been announced by Walmart and Ibotta, the shopping app, and there's a specific grocery list that you can purchase and you'll get your money back from buying those things. So through this partnership, there's a specific grocery list with brands including Butterball, Coca-Cola, and Campbell's, and you buy the things on that list, it comes to just about over $20. These are some of the things you would need for a traditional Thanksgiving dinner, a turkey, green beans, mashed potatoes, stuffing, cranberry sauce, those kinds of things. And then you take a picture of your receipt, you either upload it through the Walmart or the Ibotta app, and then you get cash back for those items, 100% cash back. So we've got the details of that on WKYC.com if you're interested in checking that out. Good news for a Northeast Ohioan. One of us has been named to a role in President-elect Joe Biden's administration. Steve Ricchetti is his name. He's a 1975 graduate of Westlake High School right here in Cleveland. He's also a graduate of Miami University in Ohio. He went to law school in Virginia at George Mason University School of Law, and he will now be counselor to the president in Joe Biden's administration. He was also chairman of the Biden-Harris campaign and worked under Biden when he was vice president as his chief of staff. Ricchetti also served as deputy chief of staff to President Bill Clinton, among many other things, and he will be part of the administration when President-elect Joe Biden is sworn in on January 20th. One more thing before we go, if you've been checking out Twitter at all today, you know that Twitter has launched a brand new feature, and it looks a lot like Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat stories. This feature is called Fleets, and it is disappearing tweets. They have decided to call it fleets because of the fleeting nature of these tweets. And Twitter says that this is designed to diminish concerns for new users who might be turned off by the very public and permanent nature 
of normal tweets. Now, if you take a look on Twitter, some people seem into it. A lot of people say they hate it. We kind of see that a lot when we see tweaks in social media. I, for one, can tell you when Instagram stories became a thing. I was, <coughs> excuse me, I was not a fan of Instagram stories. A lot of people are resistant to change at first, but I will say this. If you're getting into fleets because you like the idea that they don't last forever, screenshots last forever. So don't bank on that. That's all I'm saying. That's it for your three news now update for Tuesday, November 17th. I'll have more for you on what's new at 5 p.m. in the trending stories segment on click, uh, clicking in Cleveland on what's new, which you can watch in the WKYC app. And I'll see you back here tomorrow with more three news now. If you don't already, you can subscribe to the three news now podcast. Just search for three news now with Stephanie Haney on your favorite podcast platform. Hit that subscribe button and give us a rating and a review. I would really appreciate it. I'll see you all back here tomorrow. Stay safe. Be well. I'm Stephanie Haney.